Thank you. So thanks for joining us today at NXP in Korea. And uh, I want to bring you some news about our integration activities. And actually, this is the next steps towards a global radio. Um, as you might know, currently, uh, there are still lots of variants of radios worldwide. And uh, we strive to get one hardware variant which can serve all the standards worldwide. So about NXP. Um, we are a nearly $5 billion company in turnover in 2013, and 60% of our turnover comes from Asia. We have more than 25,000 25, employees worldwide and uh, manufacturing in Europe and also in Asia. We have a very strong innovation pipeline, so you can see here that more than 10%, actually it's really 12% of our turnover goes into R&D activities, so our innovation pipeline is quite strong. And uh, we are also only active normally in areas where we are number one, number two, number three, and or we can be under the first three. All the rest we will not do, so that also means um, we are always <coughs> amongst the best in our business areas. And this is especially also valid for automotive, as you can see here. So we are in infotainment systems, the number one, in in-vehicle networking, as well as in uh, car access and immobilizers we have, and uh, the number three in the magnetic sensors. So what we do in general in NXP, not only automotive, but also in general, is uh, we have automotive know-how, know -how, we have security um, know-how for the ID chips, for example. And uh, there we strive for connections for a smarter world. And it's not only simple connections, it's about secure connections for all the smarter world. That means uh, we will connect in future the car to the portable and wearable things, to the internet of things like washing machines, like refrigerators and all that stuff and also the cybersecurity about all the payment methods <coughs> you have. So everything will somehow be connected and all those connections need to be secure. And for both, we have the methods, we have the technology in place and are developing further. So the megatrends we see worldwide um, is megatrends also shaping the automotive um, industry. This is, for example, energy efficiency this is connected devices, this is security, and this is also safety. And if we have a closer look to those trends, then we see that some trends are going up and other trends are going down. So if you, for example, look to the energy efficiency, this was a trend. Now we have already quite something achieved here. We will continue to do that. But for the community, the trends connected devices in the car is a real mega trend. Ev everything needs to be connected in the car, whether it's music, telephone, or whatsoever. We have security. We need to secure those connections we have inside the car. And we also need to make the whole thing safe. This is also related to car-to-car -to -car communication, for example, where you can warn other cars uh, about accidents or other things going on on the streets. And this is actually, again, um, an area where we see a lot of growth going on. And we will be amongst the, the top tiers here. So that means amongst uh, the first three in this market. Looking at the car, um, there's, a lot of there's a lot of connections into the car and also into, into the engine and whatsoever. So we have the portable device con connectivity. That means here's already a connection into the internet. Here's a connection to more data you need in the car, connection to music. Um, you have a connection already with your key to your car. The key already might have a personal data of you. There is uh, in how you adjust your car to your personal needs is already on that key. Um, we have NFC connections in the car to establish Bluetooth, for example. We have cellular connections for features like e-call. Um, we have radar for advanced driver assistance systems. And um, also a wireless network um, for car-to-car -car communication, but also for car to infrastructure like traffic lights, for example. And all those areas we are active, and especially we are active still in the area also of broadcasting. So that means we have all those connections, but still broadcasting is very important because broadcasting is really forcing you to get the data. And this is something where we also continue to develop and strive to combine all those different standards you can see here into one IC. 
Um, looking to the current market numbers, this is some numbers from Strategy Analytics. Um, when you look to the car infotainment market, so that means the multimedia systems and the sound systems in the cars, NXP is amongst the first here. So with a market share of 14%, we are ahead of the rest of the market. And actually, most of the global top tier ones are amongst our customers, same as the, the OEMs or the car makers. Um, so, and we strive to keep this position and even um, expand it further. So, what are actually the trends driving the car infotainment integration further? There's first the trend that the digital radio market is now really picking up. We have waited for quite some long time um, for the digital radio market, especially in Europe. It was really um, picking up very slowly. Um, HD radio was also in the beginning picking up slowly. Now we have quite a, secure, uh, quite a mature market already in HD radio. And now you can see DAB is really picking up. This is the yellow line here. You can see this picking up. And this also makes more tuners per car necessary. So we have again an integration to do. And um, this growth currently we see is really done by coverage. The coverage has been increased. Several countries <coughs> have uh, increased their uh, DAB program offer. And um, yeah, this is actually driving here the market for new radios for cars, which is needed. Some news from the DAB markets. Um, so in Germany, there has been a new national DAB multiplex launch. So it's again nearly 20 new programs we have on this. We have traffic services now coming up. So in the past, it was always only RDS TMC, and now it's really it's getting TPEC, and it's getting messages uh, in a higher resolution than before. Yeah. Same happens for Belgium, for Netherlands, for Germany, for UK, for Norway, and you can see even the first switch-offs for, for Norway and for Denmark are planned. And um, in UK, the switch-off has been planned for 2019 and 55% of the new cars have already as a standard equipment, they have DAB radio. So it's now really picking up, although um, DAB has been developed 1987 already. So then it has new features, which also drive the trend towards more tuners in a car, but also to more standards. So and those new features also coming up with, um, with the new HMI systems we have in there, with the touch screens we have in the car, with the capacitive touch screens, and also with uh, methods like mirror link and also the mobile phones. This is, on the one hand, traffic services. We have a better quality right now, and traffic services is the method to distinguish from competition if it comes to navigation systems. Navigation is more or less commodity right now, but um, the difference makes the traffic services. And there are several traffic services right now competing in the DAB area, but also in the area of the um, mobile phone network. Then we have the expanding program offer. I explained already about this one. There we have the data services, which we need to display now. And um, yeah, the program offer driven by the digital radio. We have the area coverage also increasing. So that means the digital radio is complementing the analog radio with its coverage. So that means several programs are sent simultaneously via digital radio and analog radio. So new features like blending came in that you really can blend from FM to DAB and backwards. And the customer will not hear anything about this. Um, and we also invent new reception technologies. So these are reception technologies also increasing the coverage because we get 3 and 5 and 6 dB better reception sensitivity. So even in that area, there's still innovation ongoing and still improvements ongoing. Uh, the advanced user interfaces we have in the car, like the touchscreens, also make it necessary that you offer um, yeah, more radio data. For example, you have station lists in the car where you really can choose from the station. There's no frequency to tune anymore. You just choose the station and you hear, you hear the music coming from this one. You also have a data service display. For example, this service you can see over there um, is just a news service. So you can read the latest news um, or the car even can read the latest news for you. And this new service is already available. This is on air. And for all those services, you need tuners. 
you cannot on the same tuner do at the same point in time a station this receiving traffic and also new services. You need several tuners for this today. And this is something where we really can see in the automotive industry that the single tuners is going down, the amount of, but the systems with dual tuners and triple and more tuner systems is rapidly going up now. So that means there's definitely the need for more integration because right now the systems can have eight and 10 and more chips to realize the functions. Also what we can see is increasing audio requirements. In the past, we just had some amplifiers. They were linear more or less. You had some bass, some treble, and that's it. That, that was a nice radio. So what is now going on is especially that branded car audio is picking up. So the branded car audio is now wanted not only by the high end, but also by the mid-range mid -range and lower end cars. And how to make this possible, how to make this cost efficient to offer this for those, um, for those segments. Um, so there we thought also about an integration. So we need some integrated methods to apply those audio algorithms from companies like DTS, like QNX, Dolby, and many more. Um, where you have audio algorithms for surround sound, for, um, for circus surround, for um, example, for active noise cancellation, where you can cancel the engine noise with, or engine sound enhancements, where you really can, can enhance the sound of your engine. So those are methods already used, and today you need to have huge DSPs for this to calculate, to run the algorithms on. So tomorrow, and even today already on the Dirana 3, it's possible to do this on the radio chip already. So on the radio chip, the capabilities are already integrated to, um, to implement technologies like these from those companies. Yeah. And what we also see, if we look to the requirements we get from the OEMs, then we can see clearly that the requirements for audio processing will also rise. So we started with something like below 200 MIPS audio processing uh, in 2010, and we expect this also to rapidly go, grow. So we have already the first RFQs running where the audio requirements go up to 12,000 MIPS already for the highest end. Yeah. And a part of this we can already cover integrated in this IC. So there's no need more for external DSPs, it's just integrated. You can just see this also from history. Durana 2, we started already with this integration. We have already a history, we have a roadmap. So we recognize very early that the integrated audio might be an important part of the integration into the car radio. Mm -hmm. So we started with, uh, with just 270 MIPS in the beginning, and the Durana 2 was very successful with this one. Now, we have the Durana 3 on the market. We have up to 900 MIPS here available, and an open core where third-party algorithms can be implemented. And um, this one is right now really picking up, so we have many customers now counting on the audio capabilities of the radio chip. And for next generation, we will have up to 2,000 MIPS available in order to cover audio requirements of customers. And it's all integrated, so that means there's no more need for external DSPs. Saving cost and also saving space on the board. So what comes next? Now we have digital radio, we have more tuners coming up. And we have still multiple variants of the customers worldwide. So if I look at the customers, they, they are really challenged. If they want to market their cars worldwide, they really have different requirements like standard AM, FM, they have DRM radio, they have DAB radio, HD radio, um, and also different TV standards, satellite radio, and all this in the past was different modules. It was plug-in modules, it was different PCBs, and everything had to be validated and qualified and again and again, and that also then for many different regions. So in the end, you have up to 150 or even 200 different variants of a radio um, for just one OEM. And this is quite costly. And that's basically also the reason why we strive to go for a global one chip. So that means in the end, you will have only one hardware. There will be one IC in this. This can do audio processing, radio processing, digital radio, analog radio. And you have only one IC and the software in the end. The software defines what this radio is, for what region this is, and what kind of features is integrated. 
So it's not anymore defined by how the PCB looks like, what kind of ICs you pick from, from, from where. You just have to apply this one IC and then you can define via software what's going on. And this is our roadmap to that. And this is um, the steps we have already taken, like the Dirana 2, that we had two external tuners. If you look to the um, digital domain there, you also had a system of five ICs you needed in order to realize an HD or a DAP system. So that was quite huge. That's the past, more or less. Right now, we have the Dirana 3 and the Saturn IC. So Saturn already has two internal tuners for digital radio. Here we have two AM FM tuners integrated. And with this system, you can cover already most of the use cases. It's still two ICs, but you have the audio capabilities in there. You have four tuners integrated already, and this reduces the board already quite a lot, footprint-wise and also cost-wise. Because also the Saturn is already um, capable of having software definition of the digital radio standard. So the customer really can define end of line at the OEM, whether it's an HD radio or there is a DAB or DRM. So the customer can define that. And in future, we strive to go even further to the one chip. That means we will use our RF CMOS technology to define the next level software defined radio. And this next level then really means you can do analog and digital on one IC and you can even um, have up to four tuners on one IC. So that means all this here has then been replaced. What we then still afterwards <coughs> have to work on is also to integrate TV because in principle it's the same technology. We are talking just about different frequency ranges and in principle it's doable also to integrate TV in this kind of chip. That will be the next step afterwards then. If we take a look at the boards, so what is the effect actually of this integration, then you can really see this was, this was a DAB board, a DAB radio board with a Cayman IC that was the previous generation. Yeah. If you compare this to the Senator, um, if you compare this to the board we have currently, to the Saturn board, there's quite a huge difference. It's less than a quarter of the area already. In future, you can expect that the same size of boards can also do not only the DAB, but it can also do the analog radio as well. In real life, the whole thing looks like this. So this is a Cayman board, yeah, digital radio board from 2011. 2012 was BGA, was already smaller. And now we go to the Saturn board, which really replaces this kind of huge board already on one IC.